proteins may be the most confusing of the macronutrients. We know we need to eat protein in the diet to stay healthy. We also know that muscle is made of protein, and most of us understand that animal products like meat and dairy are high in protein. But there is so much more that you should learn about proteins. For example, did you know that proteins are needed as building materials for connective tissues, organs, and red blood cells? Also, we need protein to make all the enzymes in our body and many hormones. Our body is made of approximately 15% protein by weight. Additionally, proteins in our food or those stored in our body can serve as an energy source. Protein contains four calories per gram, just like carbohydrates. However, unlike carbohydrates or fats, proteins contain the element nitrogen. When scientists determine the amount of protein in a substance, they often quantify the nitrogen content and then use an equation to calculate the amount of protein in that substance. You may be surprised to know that some plant products, such as legumes like lima beans, soybeans, lentils, or chickpeas, as well as nuts like walnuts, pecans, and pistachios, are also fantastic protein sources. So, what are proteins made of? Well, the building blocks of proteins are amino acids. 20 common amino acids can be linked together in a series to make long chains. These long chains functionally folded on themselves are referred to as proteins. The sequence of amino acids and the protein's shape determines the protein's function in the body. You may have heard of essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids. To put it simply, essential amino acids are needed in the diet. We must consume essential amino acids in our meals to meet our body's protein needs. There are nine essential amino acids that need to be consumed. The non-essential amino acids are often referred to as dispensable amino acids. The reason they are not essential is not because our body doesn't need them, it's because we can convert select essential amino acids into non-essential amino acids. One of the major differences between plant and animal proteins is the composition of essential and non-essential amino acids. Almost all animal proteins are composed of ample amounts of essential amino acids in proportions that easily meet our protein needs. Animal proteins are often called complete proteins, as they can completely meet our protein needs alone. However, for plant protein sources, individual plant sources often lack one or more of the essential amino acids. That is with the exception of soy, quinoa, and a small number of other unique plant sources. But when it comes to plant protein sources, often the amino acid that's lacking is different, depending on the food category. For example, Plants may be low or lacking in one or more of the nine essential amino acids, making them a lower quality protein or an incomplete protein. An incomplete protein means that the protein source cannot completely meet your protein needs on its own. So if we consume legumes that are low in the limiting or low essential amino acid methionine, we can complement the legume by consuming a grain product that is high in methionine. This works out perfectly. Think about it. Together, grains and legumes can make a complete protein to meet your body's needs. Almost every culture has complementary legume and grain combinations that would allow a vegetarian to meet their protein needs. Red beans and rice, lima beans and corn, peanut butter and bread, hummus and naan, and more. So now we've learned that we can fulfill our protein needs through consuming just plants. This works great for vegetarians or those who adhere to a plant-based diet. A typical American diet is omnivorous, consuming plant and animal products. But aside from omnivorous, vegetarian, and plant-based diets, what are some other dietary patterns? A fruitarian is, you guessed it, someone who only eats fruits and nuts from trees. A lacto-ovo vegetarian is someone who eats plants as well as milk and eggs. A pescatarian consumes plants, milk, eggs, and fish. And carnivorous individuals eat only meat and organs. Hopefully, none of you are doing that. You may be surprised to learn that Americans often overconsume proteins, as many people don't realize that we only need 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. With legumes, grains, dairy, and meats providing ample protein, you may want to consider having a meal, a day, or a week where you choose one type of vegetarian diet to meet your protein needs. Reflect on how a vegetarian diet could be beneficial for your health and the health of the planet.